with you. And with your spirit. Good evening and welcome everyone. Uh, welcome to our first Sunday of Advent. Can you believe that we're in Advent already? And uh, what a beautiful one. Did you hear the, did you hear something different in Mass today? Yeah. Did, you hear the, did you hear the beautiful new organ we have? And uh, we have to, uh, well, Deb's been here for, you know, a couple of years. And so we know Deb. But Alex, Alex is our new organist uh, for our parish. So welcome, Alex. is um, very accomplished at a very young age. He's actually still studying in McGill University in Montreal, uh, but uh, doing it virtually. So he is uh, living in, in Kitchener, uh, but he, on his mother's side, he has St. Clement's roots. So it's, um, uh, we met, and on that side, uh, he, uh, I can say his full name, but it's really long, and I can't spell it. So Alex is his name, and I want to thank you, Alex, and uh, we welcome you today. And we welcome all of you. I think if you're visiting here for the first time, or if you're always here, again, with the singing part, uh, you don't have to sing. I encourage maybe you to sing a little bit. Uh, but again, singing, we're a little concerned about that. So that's why we're all separated. Uh, and that's why I think about when I was over here, uh, not in the corner yet, we'll get in the corner eventually. Uh, but uh, so we're being very cautious. So to hear the beautiful organ and to have someone play it for us and uh, be an organist um, and Deb to sing and for all of us to, where they're singing quietly now, so we, we're not doing all the verses because, again, we can't have hymnals. So it's a little strange, but it's so good uh, to hear the organ being played. So uh, welcome as we um, start this new the, the liturgical year. Uh, as we, we, we have this candle here, I think the theme for this um, year is of uh, meat is hope, uh, and hope is always something that we need, especially during the time of COVID times. So may God bless us always in the season of hope, the season of Advent. As we would look at the candle, we are blessed that we can be here together and be here together in faith. So we just, maybe for a moment before we have the, the rite of penitential, we just have a pause. We'll pause for a moment and open our hearts to God's grace. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father where you intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant your faithful, we pray, Almighty God, the resolve to run forth to meet your Christ with righteous deeds at his coming, so that gathered at his right hand, they may be worthy to possess the heavenly kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. You, O Lord, are our Father. Our Redeemer from of old is your name. Why, O Lord, do you make us stray from your ways and harden our hearts so that we do not fear you? Turn back for the sake of your servants, for the sake of the tribes that are your heritage. O oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down so that the mountains would quake at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down. The mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you who, work, who works for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways. But you were angry and we sinned. Because you hid yourself, we transgressed. 
We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, take us away. There is no one who calls on your name or attempts to take hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the hand of our own iniquity. Yes, O Lord, yet, O Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, and you are the potter. We all are all the work of your hand. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end, so that you may be blameless 
on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you were called into fellowship with his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. be with you and with your spirit in reading from the holy gospel according to mark glory to you o lord jesus said to his disciples beware keep alert for you do not know when the time will come it is like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge each with a particular task and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch therefore keep awake for you do not know when the master of the house will come in the evening or at midnight or at cockcrow or at dawn or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly and what i say to you i say to all keep awake the gospel of the lord As Father says, we're all in purple and today we celebrate the first Sunday of Advent. And as we move into the Advent season, the tone of the weekly readings will change from repent and believe in the Gospels to one of rejoice and be glad for the Kingdom of God is at hand. In the first reading today, we hear Isaiah cry out, Oh, that you would rend heavens and come down. This is a plea from the Israelites for God the Father to come down from heaven and save them from their iniquity. As you already know, whatever Israel strayed, whenever Israel strayed from God, things went terribly wrong. They then repented and called out to Him, and He forgave and healed them. In this manner they learned in painful ways that salvation comes from God alone. He is the only one who can heal their suffering and bring them back to peace and holiness. In this reading, we are reminded that by our sin, we also turn from God and become absorbed in our own misery. When we feel abandoned or lost spiritually, it is because our connection with God has been broken. And Advent is a good time to examine our lives, to repent of our failings and ask God forgiveness. In this way, to prepare ourselves for the coming of Jesus on Christmas Day. My brothers and sisters, in today's world, we especially need God's mercy and healing power. Everywhere we look, we see chaos and suffering brought about by the COVID-19. A pandemic of this sign has happened before, but never in our lifetime. All over the world, people live in fear and isolation, and that fear is tearing society apart. COVID-19 is affecting our relationships and destroying our financial stability. Many people feel trapped and helpless. We are unable to do the things that we used to do and we can no longer visit the places that we used to visit. We are not allowed to interact with friends 
and in some cases even with our family members. It seems the whole world has ground to a halt. People are frustrated and ask the questions, what can we do? Who can we turn to? Maybe, just maybe, this is the time to emulate the cries of Israelites and call out to God. Because God has the power to end this pandemic. We can ask God for scientists to develop an effective vaccination. We can ask God to end this COVID-19 with a miracle. Why hasn't the government of Canada made an appeal to the populace to pray for deliverance? Considering that a lot of them up there are Catholics. I am sure they pray privately asking God to end COVID. But I am thinking, if you hide your faith from people, God will hide his face from you. That's why we hear the words, I did not know you. That's where the words Jesus spoke to the bridesmaid who ran out of oil for their lamps when they came to the door and knocked. They thought they were on the right track, but they failed badly. Now in the Old Testament, God sent the prophet Jonah to warn the king of Nineveh to repent of the evil ways, or he would destroy their city. And the king repented and he ordered the whole city to fast for 40 days. God forgave them and the city was spared. Now what makes this so amazing is the king of Nineveh didn't worship or even know the God of Abraham. So if God does that for an unbeliever who prays for mercy, how much more will he do for the person who trusts and loves him? In the second reading, Paul reminds us of the gifts that we receive from God through his son Jesus. And Paul says, by using those gifts, we bring glory back to God. The truth is, by using those gifts, the kingdom of God becomes a reality as it is in heaven. And we pray that in every Mass, in the prayer that Jesus taught us, may your kingdom come as it is in heaven. In today's Gospel reading, we are reminded again to remain steadfast and not led astray by the distractions of the world. Because we don't know the time or the hour that Jesus is going to return. So stay awake. Brothers and sisters, this is supposed to be a joyful time of the year, although many will find it difficult because of the social distancing, especially the elderly and the people who live alone. In his homily a few weeks ago, Father Peter spoke about how people weren't judged on the many great accomplishments they did, but rather they were judged on whether or not they met the very basic needs of humanity. That means looking after the needs of others, especially the widows, the orphans, the poor and the marginalized. That's what's important. Jesus came for them, not for the healthy. And we are called to this mission as we live out our lives in the kingdom of God. For that's where we live now. We are living in the kingdom of God. As Father said, we are all baptized and anointed priest, prophet, and king. And king means servant, just as Jesus was king and he came to serve us. So we must go out and serve others. During the next few weeks, let us be diligent and watchful for our neighbors who are suffering. And if possible, find ways of letting them know that they are not alone. And we are thinking of them. We are praying for them. Little acts of kindness go a long way. Maybe a postcard on the doorstep. And if possible, help them in ways that you feel is necessary and needed. Nobody should feel out or forgotten in these difficult times, and especially over the season. The grace of God is with us through our baptismal anointing. We have a mandate to take care of each other. It is what Jesus asked us to do. And we are blessed to be able to serve God in his kingdom on earth. God bless you.
Let us profess now together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We now bring to God in this Advent season our Advent prayers, our prayers from one another, from our community, from our world, that God will hear us in this special time. For the Church, eagerly awaiting the fulfillment of the children of God, we pray to the Lord. Lord for the world, longing for its promised salvation and fulfillment, we pray to the Lord. Lord for the sorrowing and the despairing, the suffering and alienated, the forgotten and overlooked, for them we pray to the Lord. Lord for all families here today, all who have experienced the loss of a child, whether before birth or after, that God will give them strength that their faith will sustain them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish and from our diocese, working together as we await the Lord's return in glory, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died marked with the sign of faith, and for all who grieve their loss, especially for those who are written in the book of life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, and for all the needs that we carry in the quiet of our hearts this day, we pause. For these we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. Let us also pray for our music ministry in COVID times. We also pray and may God guide Alex, our new organist, and watch over him in our music ministry at this time. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our God of mercy and goodness, through your salvation, you guide us in love. Help us in our prayers always to you. Through your Son, Jesus, who lives forever and ever. Amen. Pray now, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your and the praise and the glory of his name. Except we pray, O Lord, these offerings we make, gathered from among your gifts to us, that we that may 
celebratory, and may what you grant us to celebrate devoutly here below gain for us the prize of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. To our Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he cometh again in glory and majesty, and all that may last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. Now with all the heavenly realms, and all the powers and angels and dominions. We sing the hymn of your glory as will end. We acclaim as we say together. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy the four the gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and then to willingly end of his own passion, Jesus took bread. In giving thanks, he broke the bread, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the shepherd then entered the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins, do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial, of his death and resurrection. We offer you, Lord, the bread of life in the chalice of salvation, giving thanks you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Douglas, our Bishop, the clergy, and all the people of God. Remember also our brothers and our sisters from our families and from our friends who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and Saints who please you throughout the ages, Saint Teresa, St. Basil, St. Lucy, and that they may merit to be co-heirs of eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For it is through him, with him, in the God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. As we stand together as one family, at Jesus' command, we now dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, 
grace ye grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy may we always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give to you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grace ye grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other now a sign of Christ's peace. Peace with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you shall enter into my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. The Body of Christ. Amen.
let us pray. May these mysteries, O Lord, in which we have participated, profit us, we pray. For even now, as we walk amid passing things, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven and to hold fast to what endures. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just a few announcements uh, today at Mass. The bulletin is available as online or as you uh, come into the church. Uh, if you like, we're hoping Christmas is still going to be happening here uh, in the church because of um, uh, the pandemic, but we're hoping we're going to have so we, so we encourage you. There's going to be hopefully eight and uh, six and nine thirty in the morning. We're hoping that we, that we have it so that maybe just the families uh, with young children come to the four o'clock. Um, but we can talk about that. And then there is six eight. So we want you to register. Um, you don't have to come to mass again because of the concerns I'm a little concerned about, um, not the crowds, but just about um, people being kind of nervous. So again, you don't have to come to Mass. And so just think about that, and we can always talk individually about that after Mass or during the week. Also as well, too, we are starting next uh, Saturday from 4 to 4.30, um, we will have confessions here for Advent, or by appointment as always. The Angel Tree is going very, very well. Thank you for your generosity. There's a few left in the back of the church. We decided uh, this week in our pastoral council uh, to have a takeout turkey dinner on Saturday, December 12th. And that's two weeks from today. Uh, it'll be from 4 to 7. Check out the bulletin and also the website for that. And um, also this week, I'm going to be going on, I didn't go this, in the, this whole past year on retreat, so I'm going to have a few days um, uh, at a quiet place um, for retreat uh, Monday to Friday. You'll be in my prayers. Please pray for me and I'll pray for your intentions. So there's no masses, just Monday and Tuesday to, to Friday. And also, you're going to hear more about Ray of Hope in Kitchener. It's a place to volunteer. I know Deacon Basil volunteered there. We'll talk about that more um, next week. So thank you all for coming. May God bless you all. And it's so nice to have music. Um, I don't know how Alex knew, or maybe he was then encouraged, but that's my favorite Advent communion hymn was what we had this evening. So that what a God works and very uh, God works overtime sometimes, especially for me. So thank you, Alex and Deb, uh, for your goodness and your you're just out of the goodness of your heart. Uh, we thank you. I'm a little cautious about music, so thank you very much. And may God bless you all. And we're all open to suggestions and comments and critiques because. I'm always learning, and I made lots of mistakes. So may God bless you all, and um, very good homily, Deacon Basil. Very good, thought-provoking. So thank you for that. So before we have our final prayers, we will just pray our prayer together for the campaign. You've been all very generous. Thank you for your prayer, your prayer support, and your support. Almighty and eternal God, you alone are the source of every good gift. We thank you for the blessings you pour out on us. Signs of your infinite goodness given freely out of love. Continue to form each of us into faithful stewards of your abundant blessings. Help us to cultivate our gifts with care and love, to share them generously with those in need and return them with increase to you, our Heavenly Father. As you renew all things in Christ, grant to our parishes and dioceses a fresh outpouring of your Holy Spirit. May this community of faith be of one heart and soul. As we work together in your name, we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our Lady of the Annunciation, pray, pray for us. us. And Saint Teresa, pray, pray for us. us. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace to love and serve each other. Thanks be to God. I remember this time. <laughs>